before, but for you, it always seems like there's there's always some sort of visual element, um, you know, especially with video game music. How does how does the visuals relate for you to the music that you're playing? Well, the thing I always have to remind people, or if they don't know, cool, but usually with people who don't know, I still try to remind people that I started off with visual art first. Like, mm-hmm. I originally wanted to be a visual artist. Um, and uh, uh, that was the first thing, at least, that I came in contact with is my artistic expression. Like, when I was, like, five and six, I was, like, drawing constantly. And I even started taking, like, you know, when you can do... I went to an arts school, like, in, in, in elementary school, uh, uh, Bethune Elementary School of the Arts, and so when I was there, um, you could take whatever art classes you wanted, essentially, until that until you uh, um, got into uh, your third through fifth grade year, where you had to pick your major and your minor, <laughs> which I thought was like kind of cool, you know. Like, so <laughs> it's funny thinking about it for like third and fifth grade, yeah, <laughs> like those kids very, like picking yeah. their major, and college kids are like, yeah. I don't know what I want to do with my life. Right, but they start you at, like, eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> so the coolest thing about it is that, like, you know, you get to pick out of, like, I don't know, there were, like, seven disciplines or something. Maybe okay. more. I think, I think it was somewhere around that number because mm-hmm. you did, like, one every day. Like, or sorry, you did two every day before you get to that just to see what they're all like um, in different versions of those disciplines. So, like, um, I had to choose between a bunch. Like, uh, I love art because art is, like, that was what I wanted to do, period. So I did two-dimensional and three-dimensional art. So I was doing drawing and painting. And I was also doing, like, putting on smock and doing things in the kiln, mm-hmm. you know, with clay and stuff like that, which is also really cool. Um, never got to sculpting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that might have been when I was older. Um, but uh, so then the other thing was, like, okay, you can do dance, you can do theater, you can do, uh, uh, so like, musical theater or just, you know, non-musical theater or, like, uh, strings. And I was going to pick strings because I was like, oh, this is cool. But then you had to play, like, get the – you have to spend like a whole year plucking before you can freaking like get mm. to the bow. And I was like, I don't, this is boring. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it would be more. So I was like, oh, let's pick band. It's neutral. I don't want the neighborhood kids seeing me dance or something like so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just pick band. And uh, so it's kind of funny. Like, you know, when I was getting to band, I ended up excelling a little faster in band than I was doing in art. And that was eventually made apparent to me too, just because even though I love drawing, you sometimes you can just tell like, what the ceiling is sometimes if you have like cats that are doing it as they're they select it as their major you can see who the real cats are mm-hmm. and so there was this one guy shout out to him uh, uh nick Bianello, really great um uh, artist um he also has his own i think he does his own tattoos and stuff like that too whatever he's he's all around a great artistic person i, I should reach out to him it's been a long time but um i used to see his like cartoon type drawings or whatever in when he we were in like fifth grade and it was at that point i was just like yeah, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I didn't really think that consciously. It was just like a feeling that I had. Uh-huh. But then my band director at the time was telling my mom, like, hey, like, this is kid has something. You should, you know, you should switch your major from art into band. So you can still do art, but just you go to it two times a week instead of three times a week, you mm-hmm. know, like that kind of thing. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever, that's fine. Just just because it's, you know, listen to the teachers. So the, but the reason why I'm telling this story is because the most important aspect of me and my personality and my vision is that everything has always been visual and like so even music i only play music that like allows me to like see and feel certain things and like i suspect that i have some kind of synesthesia like no one's ever really tested me for it but every Mm -hmm. time we people talk about it like i have the exact same sensations Mm -hmm. like you know like like i have very strong i'm colorblind but i have strong associations with colors and uh images and memories to music like i hear a sound and a, and a specific memory will pop up in my head very visually or mm-hmm. like i hear a song and then like a certain scene or image or like a or <clears throat> you know like a color something will pop up and i will, pl- I will that's how I, I i lead my direction my improvisation everything leads into that direction i always want to create some kind of a narrative with what i'm doing and so i think that's just kind of me yearning for the days when i was an artist and to not being the artist that i would have become visually um and so uh i actually wrote a suite called open world for the museum of modern art three years ago and it was like one of the one of the best experiences i've ever had um it was very stressful having to do it because it was such a tight deadline Mm -hmm. but um it was essentially a commission for the summer stage and there's a other there's a lot of other people that have been a part of it like i think marquise hill was also a part like one of the um composers for that year that i was doing it too and he did his own piece for them um but you only needed to do like three minutes but because you had to also write what the thing was about mm-hmm. pretty much before it was done 
I was like, I can't just bring in one of my three minute tunes and then write about. It. I got it's I have to. It was it was just stressful. So I wrote, of course, about the thing that matters the most to me: video games. So I wrote a I wrote an entire story that was based around this person traveling through these different worlds and how the narrative is being propelled by the music alone and how there's no drawings, no images, whatever. But I want to be able to like convey the feeling of like a forest, a mountain, a magical realm, all kind of stuff, and evoke that imagery in people. Hopefully, just by listening to it, you can uh, you can be transported to those places. So I try to make that. And there's actually a recording of it on YouTube. It's a little sloppy of a recording, but it was the first time we ever played it. We only had like one rehearsal, mm -hmm. but it's still pretty good. And I have some reference recordings that I've sent to people. Uh, but that's probably one of my favorite works, and it's to me to this day still probably the best example of what my mind is like when I'm expressing music through like expressing visuals through music because to me they're 100% connected like that's just, that's what happened to me when I listened to Bird for the first time so I'm gonna listen to Louis Armstrong I couldn't explain just like the, the interesting like nostalgic images I had as a 12 year old mm -hmm. like when I was like 11 and 12 and hearing Louis Armstrong and Charlie Parker the first time I felt nostalgic like it's weird I don't know how to explain that mm -hmm. but I was experiencing nostalgia as a 12 year old <laughs> it, it, I, I just really just can't and i i never thought about that explaining it until just now that's mm -hmm. the best way i can explain what that feels like is that i was able to feel nostalgia like i had lived that before just because like the imagery of the music was so powerful to me i could see and envision like this interesting landscape or painting or something i don't know maybe there might be other people who are watching this that might have a similar feeling but don't know how to express that but to me that's that's what it was it was an eerie feeling of nostalgia that drew me to the music that made me want to keep playing it more and it was never because i thought these lines are so killing it was never because i thought oh look at these changes or like oh i want to play that because it's fast i never cared about that mm -hmm. i loved the up-pitched recordings from like charlie parker playing like crazyology because of the vinyl conversion to cd or whatever mm -hmm. like it was like up a half step. I thought that was the key of the song until like college. <laughs> like, no, I guess it was more like the end of high school. Uh -huh. I thought crazyology was just in B. It's like, no, we weren't like, in high school. Nobody was playing crazyology, so I couldn't really talk about anybody, but I thought that was it. It was such a feeling, and then that switch. For some reason, that felt really nostalgic to me listening to it. It was like a really powerful sound. So I never really approached jazz as like this thing that was killing i never really cared about that it was just like the killing is like a means to an end <laughs> you know it's like it's the get to the bigger picture um so i never just stop at what's killing and and i think that's where the visuals come in because i'm trying to express always some kind of a image or narrative component to the music that i play no matter how crazy it gets